Atlam es no quick. Y no que llegó allá en el Pipcani. No acabarán mis flores, no se perderán mis cantos. Yo cantor los celebro. Ok, beautiful three lines. Thank you, Gustavo. They tell us uh, the, the essence of what we are going to try to present here is um, uh, uh, basically that uh, we should, as uh, linguists or as uh, researchers of languages, uh, that uh, are endangered and that uh, um, should be. <coughs> we try to. We are trying this conference. We are trying to find new ways of re revitalizing the languages. We, mm, we, I think, uh, our opinion is that we have to empower the communities, and I think we have discussed that here also, and we all agree in that. But uh, we shouldn't repeat the, the errors of the past where we go to these communities and we tell them what they should be doing or how they should be doing. We should just <coughs> provide the tools and mm, give them the autonomy, give them the responsibility of uh, saving their, their own languages, because they, in, in, as we discussed yesterday in the um, in, the, in, the, in the end, it's going to be the mothers, the fathers, the parents of the children who are going to take the decision of uh, what to do with the language. If they don't transmit the language, no matter what we do, uh, the language is going to, to die. And that's what's happening in, in most of the areas of the world that we have been talking about here. So we have a very more modest pr proposal, and we are thankful to Justina that uh, she let us present it. it was kind of a, um, it's three, we have three people presenting the, this proposal. Um, uh, Antonio Guerra, who is here, and this is from Mexico, he's more of an anthropologist <coughs> historian, and Juan Pablo Mora from the University of Sevilla in, in Spain. I'm, more, I'm a linguist. And Joaquin Martinez, uh, who is also a linguist, uh, and he's the, in reality, he's the one who should be here, but he's a high school teacher and only has a PhD, and he's the only expert that in Spain, as far as I know, that we, know, that we have in, in a second language. And he couldn't come here because he's teaching right now in a, in a high school Spanish language. And <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to get into the details of why are universities in Spain are so conservative? If you want, when we stop the, the recording, because we are recording this and we are going to post it in our, uh, I can, we, we can discuss it uh, privately. But uh, our, our modest proposal, I'm going to summarize in uh, very few minutes so that you get at least the gist. But uh, then uh, we let Joaquin, who uh, has to be new technologies, he's going to come through a video, short video, and also he's going to speak in, in Tunsabi, in the language that we are uh, trying to promote, it's in the second language uh, in, in Mexico, is, um, to, according to what Thomas explained the first day, is a large uh, language. It has uh, around 500,000 speakers of the language, but that shouldn't Nahuatl uh, is also a large language, even much larger than Mixtecan, but that doesn't prevent that it's uh, endangered. Because the most, most of the mistaken communities nowadays are bilingual, and this language shift process is taking place, and our informants there tell us that in 30, 40 years, if nothing is done, uh, only 5% of these 500,000 speakers will continue speaking the language. So we are in the, I think we still have in, uh, 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 enough vitality that this language can be saved, but as I said at the beginning, it's going to be depending on the, on the communities. So what we have done, uh, this crazy people that are in front of you, uh, is basically, um, uh, I'm a, I teach linguistics and I've devoted my life to teaching uh, at the university level, and it's only very recently that I learned something uh, that, that is very similar to what I, just, what I just said about the empowering the people to do their, their, own, um, uh, their own recovery of, of their own languages. Uh, as teachers, I think we, we should do the same with our teaching, with our students. Instead of telling our students what they should do, teaching them lectures where we explain everything, the knowledge that we, we think that we have, uh, what we should do is let them acquire their own knowledge. And so we should switch our teaching to <coughs> teaching where we base the teaching in projects. And that's what I decided to do in my I had done it in my master's classes for a long time. Time, but they didn't dare do it in an introduction to linguistics class where I have to deal with many topics. But last year I decided that I would change that in my way of teaching and started teaching via projects. And so I started looking for projects. Because I needed projects. So I assigned my students projects like creating artificial languages, 
uh, studying language um, and try to apply the linguistic concept in the, in the language. And I ran into Joaquin, who was very much, even though he was a high school teacher, into changing the education system through the new technologies. And he proposed to me this project. And I said, oh, this, this, this will not work. This will not work. Or this is very difficult. I'm not going to, because I was. I thought, oh, my students are not going to be willing to do that. But as soon as I proposed to my students, um, many of them showed a lot of enthusiasm. And they, they usually don't come to my classes because they're at 8.30 in the morning. So I'm just grateful <laughs> that you can. But this project that was running every Thursday from 4 to 9, they were there at the five hours of, of, the, of the trial. And so we are going to talk. Uh, about the project that took place in the University of Sevilla. <laughs> and basically, this is like a, a pictogram of the project. And this is a combination of two, um, I don't know how to call them, but pictograms from the codices uh, of the, uh, this would be flower, and that would be two, would be word. So um, we have made a combination, uh, let the flowers, let, let the word flower. Let the, 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 that's our main purpose, no? blossom. Let the, let the flowers blossom. <laughs> Uh, so we are doing it at the University of Sevilla with my linguistic students, but the proposal that I have here, I want to present to you is that anybody, anybody who teaches intellectual <coughs> linguistics or anthropology or sociology or could do this because my students have not only learned linguistics, they have learned many other things with this project. Um, the project, Joaquin is going to present the project because he's the very the, the protagonist and he is going to do it in Tun Sabi, in the language. But we have subtitles it into English, so I hope we can, we, you can all follow me. We need to. <coughs> okay. Oh. Well, should we? We always had lots of problems connecting to Mexico, but we managed. Oh. Well, you can read it. Sakitu Hundu, 
Kalau itu bisa gini, minyak, kalau itu hingga na sakwa asi itu, na itia, tak ada tuan tuan nuna, aku ni tuan asana, dua na si na sawi, sanyu sawi, na sa, ku bisa kwa nanti, bisa kaji projek tu, yang tu saya, projek tu ke Santa Tia ku yo tu sawi, kasih cinyu yo, isan yang tak tu yo. Ya yo tu sabi social media, kacina, ya ku Facebook, ya ku Yo, ya ku Twitter, ya ku Pinterest, inga tu semua. Icin juga ku ni tu nya, aku tanya tu, ku tanya bantu nya, uvinin dati aku tu sabi, uvinin tu kunci tu sabi, tu nasi uvin, tu kau kisah, datu na sa social media, ya sa. Tu kotor dosa yo social media, kumi kotor ni yo sari si yo kuani na sabi tu eh, na tu kau na kata na yang sabi, na ka tatu na tu sabi, yo kuani na jubi, na tv na musika ini tu sabi, ya na kuni sona inga na na sabi na, na sa baru na ni yo sa eh, inga tu kundo, kana tu na sabi. Na kuche, na chinyu nuna sabi, na Jaime García Leiva, ni a Ofelia Pineda Ortiz, na Gabriel Caballero Morales, ni a Melinda Timurcio Solano. Na tutu kundo, si nga na yubi na kujena na sabi, ni a Palastu Anita Mesri, si nga Emily John Martin, ni a Kay Washington, USA. Kimika, te ni na tutu, si nga Emily John Martin, sa kuna endu, Cinyu eh, sakwanya tu sabi. Demi kanya si tu, cinyu nyakisanya sana sabi. Nanti yu wasper, si yu kwani na tayo, na si kana, nyaka. Pahalo, tu yu lah sakundan ito sa proyekto ka. Nyege diki yo sa e, nye nyage kisabi yo. Aku cinyu nyanya, aku oku cinyu nyo. Kuni yo nanti dia kutus awi, jadi dia bingke yang kau jadi kui tujuh itu, tuah sa kau jadi tu mu maju nyu, rasa kuat itu, di di tanah kau sini na apa yang disinu eh, asa disinu itu, kau ni kan tak kau eh, bicara kau sini tu si, doa nata yo nanti kita nu nyu mira mau bise, baru dia do. Na sabi, tu kwa na, na ka na kwa sika. Dena, inga nyo. Dawi na chi, pani, na hindi na, sa tu sabi. Uwini, taka hindi na, sa tu ka, tu ni kutuwa na, si juwa si na, ra, tu ni tana na, tu mu, sa tanu na, hindi na, si tabi nito. Okay, this is his words. I don't know if you could follow them. Sorry for the beginning, but we couldn't hear him. Um, um, we go show the map. Uh, well, we have this in YouTube, so if you can, if you, you, we also have it in Spanish, the subtitles in Spanish, and if anybody wants to subtitle it in any other language, this is the good thing about the social media. We can enrich what others have, have done. Uh, we, as I said, we are going to Mexico and to, uh, in particular to the Mixteca region, which is in the three states of Puebla, Guerrero, and Oaxaca. That's where the Mixtecans uh, live and where they speak their language. It has been quite, uh, the situation has been quite good uh, until very recently when through education, through migration, especially all the problems that we have been discussing here, many of the Mixtecans, because of economical reasons, had to emigrate to California in both sides of the border. Work and that's making that uh, uh, the migrants are um, are not transmitting the language to the new generations and in many communities they are bilingual and the low prestige of the language makes it, makes it difficult for the parents to decide to transmit it to the next generation and what we talked yesterday about the stigma no there is a lot of racism in Mexico unfortunately and if you speak differently you are targeted and that's what the parents try to avoid when they don't transmit the language. So what we are trying to do with this project, we have enrolled a, a student, young students from Sevilla University, and um, we have set up a, 
many different um, uh, web pages, uh, well, different social media, Pinterest, YouTube, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Google Plus communities, and um, we have provided a framework where our students uh, are going to be in contact with speakers of the mixed language, and they are going to, to interact, and they are going to the role of our students is to, to act as activists in a sense of uh, suggesting that they should use the, the, the language, encourage them to use the language in the social media. And our hope is to collect all the, all the interventions that take place in, in the social media in this language and we can make a large archive that can serve for documentation purposes. Uh, so we started this project this semester, so we don't know what's going to happen to it. Uh, Joaquin, as he has said, started a long time ago. He has developed uh, a dictionary of Punjabi of the region where he, he stayed, um, also a, a grammar, a pedagogical grammar. We have provided this, we have made this available to our students so that they can learn even some recordings of the language that can be used as modern for, for our students to, to learn about the language. And, and now the final project for, for the students is to use uh, the language uh, well in order to prepare a questionnaire in Spanish, because most of them is taken, who are, we are targeting are bilingual, but we, uh, Joaquin will translate it into Tunsabi, so that they send the questionnaire that our own students um, have uh, prepared for uh, to send through the social networks to make these native speakers uh, of the, of the Tunsabi language, so that they can um, so that they can use it, or they feel encouraged to use it. Uh, we don't know if it will work, but so far, because we, Tony already created many months ago a Facebook page, and he got quite a lot of uh, supporters <coughs> in the uh, from lots of Mixteca uh, present in the in Facebook. And so what we are trying to do is create spaces where my students and Mixteca, young Mixteca, old Mixteca can communicate and try to encourage the use of the language. So that's, uh, that's our way, modest way of trying to... to um, and Tonio uh, is going to explain now what he was doing, because he was doing another aspect of the project with my, my students. Okay? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I skipped. We have there all the... Well, I skipped many things, but if we have time, we... All the um, results of my students have created blogs and have talked about the project, have presented the project to the class name. So they, uh, I mean, among my students, uh, all the students, all my students know now about the project, but not from me. Uh, they know about the Tunsabi language, and that is because I could go to a class and tell my students, oh, there are so many endangered languages, so few speakers, and they have all of these problems. But my students will never listen to me. They will listen to their own peers, uh, so I, I have them present these projects in class, that's how I uh, spend my class time, the important class time, with them presenting what they have done out of class, okay, and what they have learned out of class. And the students who participated in this project, uh, seven to ten students presented in their classes what they have learned, and it was quite enriching, I have to say. And now Tonio is going to tell about the, the other part of the project. So you see my students there, uh, these are all um, creations of my students, okay. Um, mm, okay, so. Thank you very much for inviting us to speak with you. Now I, uh, I would speak about something a little bit different and, uh, and I need uh, you to change uh, the channel and uh, to listen not just with your head, with your whole body. You, you need uh, the body to understand what I'm going to say. Mm, to get closer to, to this. So uh, I'm a, a PhD, PhD student, PhD student from uh, 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 Universidad Complutense de Madrid, and I uh, I'm studying a, a a program that is uh, called History and Theory of Drama, <clears throat> and we, I'm studying uh, performances, ethnic performances uh, from. Uh, uh, ethnodrama perspective. The ethnodrama theory was uh, created by uh, this man. He is uh, Gabriel Weiss, the son of uh, Leonora Carrington, the surrealist. So uh, uh, he, uh, the main thing that he proposes in his theory is to um, to um, 
to differentiate uh, the performances from theater. Uh, before the anthropologists, anthropologist, they studied uh, the performances as a drama thing. So he says that we have to differentiate drama and performances. So we have to find out what the structures of the of the of this performance are inside. So uh, what is an, what is an ethnodrama? It's something to relate, related to magic, to magical thinking. We say magical thinking. Uh, it's something related to uh, evoking something, some someone that is invisible, uh, and, the, and something that is related to feast, celebration, community, dance, etc. So an ethnodrama is a of course, uh, as a different quality, of course, inside the body of the, per, of the performers, the ones that are participating in an ethnodramatic uh, event. It, it, does, it does occur in the mind and the body of the people that are inside. Uh, Anthony Arco went to Mexico, to uh, Sierra Taromara. He had an uh, experience with the Ralamuri uh, community. He wanted to give back to the theater the drama uh, ingredient that lost, uh, that was lost. So he went to, uh, he experienced the peyote ritual, and he could see before uh, the ride. He, <coughs> he he didn't speak the language of the ramari, but he 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 spoke a magical thing, <coughs> language. So he was able to see. Uh, a language inscripted in the mountains, inscripted in the body of the community. Uh, he was able to, uh, to uh, as an artist, to have uh, this sensibility of uh, switching back and forth from the scientific point of view to uh, an artistic or another appreciation of reality. The main thing of uh, doing a uh, 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 dramatic studies are to expose ourselves to a, another another way of thinking reality, another way of uh, another epistemology, another way of uh, perceiving reality, another type of knowledge. So he is he is quite, uh, he discovered this ecological language. Um, uh, at the Mixteca, there is an example of this ecological or body language. So, but this uh, technology, uh, corporal technology that they use just to uh, have a communication with their bodies and with the bodies of the community and the bodies of the, 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 of the things that are there. The stone, the plant, the, the mountain, the sky, the sun, the rain. We are going to watch a, a video of uh, my teacher that is teaching me how to speak with rain and sickness. And then uh, this is an example of how we can be, uh, be, be done at the internet. Uh, this type of language is also can be documented uh, and, and can be, uh, uh, this tool will be a, a very good uh, tool to, for these seconds to, for mistakes to, uh, to uh, develop their language, this, uh, this type of language. Of course, there are some things to that could not, see, can, could not be seen in the this documentation. But uh, they, they could support uh, the developing of this kind of language. Kind of yeah, there, there are some, uh, some uh, videos that can be shared to the community, and they are sharing this, such so that this language is preserved. Um, and this is a uh, 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 video that we did uh, with the students at the Universidad de Sevilla. They started to uh, to practice this technical uh, this uh, technical body. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Martin, but we watch the video. Yes, I have a question. So, my students were engaged in, in analyzing this codex, uh, the Hispanic codex, but it, it was a long process, the, almost the whole semester, to prepare this performance at, at the end. Okay? So, I want to thank him for giving my students the opportunity to do that because it was very enriching for them and for me also. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we don't have more time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything is on the web in our pages. Uh, we are developing for this project, so you can analyze even all the all the connections we have with the Mistaka, with activists there, and if, this can be used for other people who are interested in, uh, in this project. Okay. Do you have any questions? Could you explain what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is not a theater. It's a it's a it's a performance that that is not uh, the ritual of rain, but it's a it's another type of performance that practices the, uh, the shamanic uh, techniques. That is, uh, uh, the representation does not occur. In, you don't you cannot be the paper. It occurs in the mind of the people that are participating. So uh, um, we we are using introspective uh, techniques to to uh, get inside ourselves and uh, and connect ourselves with the others in that in that um, in that, uh, <coughs> in that channel. So I'll try to I'll try to explain it. But um, and. Uh, and we use a, as a tool a, a puppet, a, a shadow puppet, so, so as to see what is hidden to the consciousness. The consciousness. Looks like the bayon you still in Indonesia, you know. Yes, yes, uh, we use uh, that. Uh, that's that an example. But uh, but the performance that you see is not the real performance that is taking place. The real performance is inside of the mind of the students that are uh, participating now. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you very much you. for your presentation. We have the next speaker, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have another speaker?